a friend we have in Jesus. Welcome to our worship today, the second Sunday before Advent. Advent is of course a season when we prepare for Christmas. It's also a season when we remember that one day Jesus said he would come back again with great power and glory to sort out everything that needs to be put right. And today we're going to be thinking about how we can live in our troubled times and in the light of the fact that Jesus will one day return. As we come to worship, we begin with a prayer that our hearts may be right. Let's say this together. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to sing a hymn of dedication to God. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around. Here among us, make the place where your love is found. to God. It isn't easy living the Christian life and so we bring to God now all the things that we wish might have been different in the past days. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. And now Jerome is going to read our readings, and in between we'll have a hymn. The first reading is taken from Thessalonians 5, verses 1 to 11. 
It is entitled, Be Ready for the Lord's Coming. There is no need to write to you, brothers, about the times and occasions when these things will happen. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come, as a thief comes at night. When people say, everything is quiet and safe, then suddenly destruction will hit them. It will come as suddenly as the pains that come upon a woman in labor, and people will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the darkness, and the day should not take you by surprise like a thief. All of you are people who belong to the light, who belong to the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, we should not be sleeping like the others. We should be awake and sober. It is at night that people sleep. It is at night that they get drunk. But we belong to the day and we should be sober. We must wear faith and love as a breastplate, and our hope of salvation as a helmet. God did not choose us to suffer his anger, but to possess salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us in order that we might live together with him, whether we are alive or dead when he comes. And so encourage one another and help one another, just as you are now. taken from Matthew 25, verses 14 through till 30. It is entitled, The Parable of the Three Servants. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there was a man to go on a journey. He called his servants and put them in charge of his property. He gave to each according to his ability. To one, he gave 5,000 coins. To another, he gave two thousand, and to another, he gave one thousand. Then, he left on his journey. The servant who had received five thousand coins went at once and invested his money and earned another five thousand. In the same way, the servant who had received two thousand coins earned another two thousand. But the servant who had received one thousand coins went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The servant who had received 5,000 coins came in and handed over the other 5,000. You gave me 5,000 coins, sir, he said. Look, here are another 5,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had been given 2,000 coins came in and said, You gave me 2,000 coins, sir. Look, here are another 2,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, 
so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had received 1,000 coins came in and said, Sir, I know you are a hard man. You reap harvests where you did not sow, and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid, so I went off and hid your money in the ground. Look, here is what belongs to you. You bad and lazy servant, said the master. You knew, did you, that I reap harvests where I did not sow? and gather crops where I did not scatter seed? Well then, you should have deposited my money in the bank, and I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. Now, take the money away from him, and give it to the one who has 10,000 coins. For to every person who has something, even more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing, even the little that he has will be taken away from him. As for this useless servant, throw him outside in the darkness. There he will cry and grind his teeth. I don't know about you, but this is the time of year when I start planning and thinking about Christmas. On Monday, I got Simon to help me to find last year's Christmas cards, which were somewhere in the area of lots of stuff, which we call the annex in the vicarage. I needed to count them and see how many, I, many more I needed to buy for this year. I've also been trying to plan December's church services, but I feel very unsure about whether or not the church will be open by then. Fortunately, even though it's possible the church is still closed, we do know that many of us will go on being able to worship online. We all hope, but none of us knows, whether it be possible to see family and friends as well at Christmas in the usual way. While what we can and can't do changes every few weeks, it's very difficult to plan at all for anything. But perhaps these current strange times have something to teach us. They perhaps remind us of the provisional nature of all of life. We like to think we're in control, but actually we're not. So how should we live in these strange and difficult and sometimes discouraging times. Both of our Bible readings today remind us that it's God who's in control, not us. Paul's first letter to the Christians in Thessalonica is probably the earliest Christian text we have, written within 20 years of Jesus's death and resurrection. I find that quite an exciting thought. We know that the Christians in this bustling city were suffering at the hands of their neighbours because of their faith. They lived in expectation that Jesus would return very soon. But how should they live in this period of waiting? They have no idea when he's going to come. Moving to our second reading, Jesus' parable of the talents. There's been a great deal of debate as to whether the rather harsh master in the story can possibly be intended to be a picture of what God is like. Leaving that aside, here in this reading too, the master has gone away. He's left his slaves in charge and given no idea about when he might come back. How should they live? What will they do with all that he has entrusted to them? When the master returns, the third slave says this, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you didn't sow and gathering where you didn't scatter, so I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. 
The other two slaves have traded with the money they've give, been given and they've made a profit. But this slave's behaviour is coloured by his view of the master. He's simply so scared that he doesn't do anything except make sure the money is safe. He's not going to take any risks at all. How we live as Christians depends on our view of God. What do we think God is like? Do we see him as a harsh taskmaster, demanding that we work hard for him, that we always do a little bit more? Or do we see him as a generous giver? Even one talent was a lot of money, probably about 15 years pay for a labourer. If we see God as the giver of abundance, a God of generosity, then we're able to receive the whole of life as a gift, to know that we are valued and loved and trusted by God. And we're able to take the risk of letting that sense of God's generosity and love and that sense of trust flow out to other people in the way that we live our lives. Many people all around us are doing this, reaching out in love and service to others in big ways and in small ways. And you may be able to think of your own examples of people doing this. As we look towards Advent, which begins, as I said, in just a couple of weeks, just before lockdown is scheduled to end, it's good to remember that Jesus will return. We don't know when, any more than the Thessalonian Christians did. Against the background of the grim news that the death toll from COVID-19 reached 50,000 last week, we too face our own particular difficulties and fears and challenges. Life does feel very uncertain. And as I said, it's very difficult to plan. But there are hopeful signs too, in particular, the development of that vaccine. And we know that God is in control. Whatever happens, the uncertainty and waiting of Advent will lead us to Christmas joy, because God gave himself for us in Jesus. And that will still be worth celebrating, whatever the circumstances and whatever happens to the rest of our Christmas celebrations. Meanwhile, as Paul tells the Christians in Thessalonica, let's continue to encourage one another and to build one another up. We too are children of light, called to shine out in dark times. Amen. Amen.
purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now Simon is going to come and lead our intercessions. Let us pray. With the positive news this week about vaccine development, perhaps we can look forward to when it is our turn for vaccination against COVID-19. But we thank you, Lord, that vaccines will first be able to protect those in greatest need, the vulnerable and our health and social care workers. And we pray that vaccines will be available fairly around the world so that everyone can soon be protected against the virus. We ask that you will continue to bless the work of the scientists and others who are developing and testing vaccines. And we pray that the vaccines will be accepted by people. We pray for leaders and media in communicating the truth and in fighting misinformation, distrust and fear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the United States, for President-elect Joe Biden and for the current President Donald Trump. We pray that dialogue and understanding will begin to replace division. We pray that this powerful country will play a positive role in dealing with the key issues that face the world climate change, inequality, war and terrorism. We pray for our own government and for our church leaders here and around the world. Lord, please give them all wisdom in responding to COVID-19 and to the economic, social and spiritual difficulties that have come from it this year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will guard, guide and protect all health workers and social care workers at this time, especially Kathy Kappa, Simon and Sharon Scott, Jenny McCarville, Emily Haywood, Katie Goff, and Zoe, and all staff at Milton Keynes and Bedford Hospitals. 
we continue to pray for Devon Lodge and for Burlington Hall, for the unemployed and those on furlough, people who feel very isolated at this time and those who feel anxious. Lord, we thank you for friends who are better now, Rose Wayne and Pete and Angelique Dias and their family. Please bless now those who mourn and those who are sick, including Harry Banks, Anina, Christine Alexander, Maureen Phillips, Barbara Armand, and the family of Susan Butcher. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are all children of light. Lord, in the weeks to come, as we continue to deal with change and uncertainty, let us keep awake. Let us put on the breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To a troubled world. Peace from Christ. To a searching world. Love from Christ. To a waiting world. Hope from Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. Lord, have you forgotten me? I've been praying to your face. Saying I'm a righteous man, but Lord, I hope you understand. I don't need fortune and I don't need fame. Send down the thunder, Lord, and send down the rain. But when you're planning just how it will be, plan a good day. should be thankful, Lord, I know I should, but Lord, I hope this day is good. You've been the king since the dawn of the time, all that I'm asking is a little less crime. It might be hard for the devil to do, but it would be Should be thankful. 